takes advantage of the big screen of the iPad and the extra uh, horsepower that it has. I'd like to show it to you. When we start up the app, you can see our really nice new home screen with the old time theater, really gorgeous display here. You can see each of your projects has its own little poster. There's a thumbnail of the movie, and the poster is based on the theme that's in the project. You can just scroll back and forth between these. Works great in portrait. It also works really nicely in landscape. And this looks really great on the retina display of the iPhone 4 and the iPod Touch as well. You scroll back here, I'm just gonna tap on this one project that we can edit. And you can see, we've got the nice editing interface here. I've got my timeline down below. It's fully multi-touch, so I can zoom in and out. I've got my nice video bin. I can see all my videos and a nice big viewer for looking at my video. Let's go ahead and do a little bit of editing. So I'm gonna scroll down here. Now, I can actually use, there's a camera button on the right that I can use to, to use the camera of the iPad 2 to record directly in the timeline, or I can go for my video bin. Now, I can just press and hold on a clip, and I can skim my finger back and forth to take a look at the video before it's been placed into the timeline, or I can just tap on a clip, and then I get two handles. So I can actually choose the segment of the video that I want to put in. And we have two different clips here. Put in a piece of that one, select the second clip, Another shot of that with the girl going in the water, so we'll pick kind of a corresponding position there. Tap that, drops into the timeline, and we've got a cross dissolve between. If we want to do a more precise edit, for the iPad 2, we have a precision editor. So I can do a reverse pinch apart, bring up the precision editor, and now I can see all the content of the clip on the left before and after the edit, and all the content for the clip on the right. I also have full control over the transition. I can double tap. And we can set that to none, so that'll make a cut. I can press and hold on the top dot, and that allows me to choose the point within that video where we want to end. So we'll pick a spot kind of where she goes out over the water. Then I can press and hold on the lower dot and do the same thing. So we can make this kind of look like just a cut in the same shot. I can press and hold on the center dot as well, and I can roll the edit. I can add and subtract frames from both sides simultaneously. When I want to take a look, I just back up a little bit and hit play. Really easy to, to keep going and adjust your edits to get things just the way that you want. And with a pinch, we close it up. Now one of the big feature requests we had from users was audio. We've done a lot of work in that area. I have a nice audio button here that I can press, and I see audio waveforms for all of my clips. These clips, all, uh, several of these clips have been muted, which you can see from the audio that's dimmed out. But when I turn the audio on a clip, I just double tap, brings up my clip settings, I can turn the audio on. I can also turn the volume up. And you'll actually see the waveform get larger. It actually shows me the change in the volume level that I've done. This next clip down here, we've got this guy going off on a zip line. It'd be great to add a sound effect there. I'm going to switch over to my audio bin, and we have sound effects here. There are over 50 sound effects that come with iMovie for use in your movies. Let's zoom down here, we've got this great jet flyby. Go ahead and add that, and when it adds, Using the audio waveforms, I can see the audio waveforms not quite lined up with that clip. I'm just going to press and hold my finger on top of that audio and just drag it back, line it right up on the clip. Now I know it's right in place. So let's take a look. I'm like excited, nervous, because I'm going to hide. Really easy. We've got three audio tracks in addition to the background audio track for use for sound effects and we have a voiceover recording system that allows me to record a voiceover right on top of my movie. Now we've been looking at one of our new themes. We have three new themes, it gives us a total of eight. This one's called Simple, and as you might imagine, it's simple. It's got plain white test, text uh, and just fade through black transitions. Looks really nice. We also now have uh, titles over stills. Speaking of stills, we also do face detection on stills. So when you one, place one in your timeline, the Ken Burns effect is automatically set up so all the faces stay in frame. Scroll back to the beginning here, and I'm going to bring up my project settings and switch to one of my other new themes called Neon. It's a really bold theme. We've got this faded out to black as well. When I tap away, you can see the really nice bold opening title that we have. We also have a great uh, theme transition, really nice lower thirds. The music automatically switched when I switch themes, which is the, the default, but I can mix and match. So I can go back to my audio bin, 
I can choose a song from my iTunes library, or I can choose one of the other eight theme songs for the other themes. I'll go ahead and choose modern. Drop that into the background. And easy as that to change the music. Now once I put the project together and I want to look at it, I can come back out to the marquee. You'll notice that the poster frame has changed to reflect the neon theme that we switched to. I can use the share button down below. If I tap on that, you can see a bunch of our new sharing options. YouTube, Facebook, Vimeo, CNN, iReport, direct sharing from within iMovie, and those are all done in high quality HD. I can also use the play button to play directly to AirPlay, or I can play on the device. Let's take a look. <laughs> 